costs and long-term operating costs associated with energy improvements. To do this, I've developed this cost template um, Excel spreadsheet. You um, can download it from the class folder. This contains about five or six tabs, and I'll explain each very quickly here as an overview. The cost data tab is a very extensive database of costs um, associated with different energy efficiency measures. This was developed by uh, BE Opt, which is a type of software that also uses Energy Plus based on um, construction costs and common energy efficiency measures. And I'll show you how to use this a little bit later. The second tab shows the Suite A Capital, which is meant to um, talk about the capital investment associated with the suite. So each suite has a number of improvement measures in it, and each one of those measures costs money to build or to renovate. So in this, we'll be looking at the costs of those measures and the cost of renewable energy. And in the energy tab, we'll be looking at the ongoing costs, the cash flow associated with those capital improvements, as well as the energy cost savings that those improvements allow. We'll also be looking at the average annual rate of return of those improvements, comparing that to a standard bank loan. So you can see the viability of any improvements that you might be suggesting. Suite B Capital, Suite B Energy are the same um, as Suite A. It's just for your second suite of options. Start by going to your energy dashboard and looking at your optimization suites. You should have at least two by now and pick one of them. In this case, I'm going to pick Worcester Hall 214. And in this um, set of optimizations, I went from the existing conditions, which use just under 200 kilowatt hours per square meter of energy per year. And the suite is just under 50 kilowatt hours per square meter per year. So I'm gonna model the difference between the existing baseline and the, all of the cumulative changes for this, the entire suite. In order to do that, I'm going to start by taking my list up here of improvements and just and make a simplified list. I'm going to press equal so that I can bring these out to the side and make a list of them all. Now that I've got the list, I'm going to take this and copy it over to my cost template. So I'm going to paste my measures in right here, and now I want to create room for them. So I'm going to delete all of these uh, that are yellow highlighted here and I'm going to add in a couple rows in the middle and then I'm going to take these guys and move them into my spreadsheet here. So one by one I'm going to go through and quantify the cost for each of these. Let's start with the LED lights. I'm going to show you two different methods of figuring out the cost for this. There's 46 uh, fluorescent lights currently in Worcester 214, and each one is a T8 linear fluorescent. And I'm going to show you the Home Depot method. I'm going to show you a, uh, a little bit more sophisticated method. In the Home Depot method, I'm going to go to the Home Depot website, type in T8 fluorescent bulbs, and I'm gonna get um, a variety of options. I'm gonna select one of these. This is a 10 pack of T8s for $30. So that's $3 a piece. So I'm gonna go as the standard replacement would be a T8 linear fluorescent at $3. And that would be $138 for 46 of them. But what I actually want are LED lights. Now I'm going to go back to Home Depot and I'm going to look for an LED fixture that has a similar aesthetic to what we've got now. So something like this might be all right, or something even more raw like this. Um, you'll notice sometimes this blue Energy Star label that indicates that it's um, more energy efficient. I'm going to just go with this for now. So this is a $40 
four foot fixture. And I'm going to say this is $40 there. So the cost of my $40 fixture times 46 fixtures is would be 1840. But I'm going to assume for the case of, for the sake of this assignment that the lights needed to be replaced anyway. They'd all burned out and we were going to replace them all. So the obvious replacement would be these $3 linear fluorescents. But instead, we've decided to go with the more energy efficient LED lights. And that difference between $1,840 and um, 3 times 46 is $1,700. You see, I've got here a cost of living adjustment because sometimes the costs that you're getting are not in the place or the source for the costs are not in the same place as your building is. In this case, it's pretty local. My Home Depot is just down the road. So these, uh, the cost of living for Berkeley would be 100%. So the adjusted total price would be $1,700 for those LEDs. However, if you are in another country or another place, uh, you can look and see what the cost of living adjustment would be between Home Depot here and the place where your building is. I'll show you a better example of this in a second when we cover uh, a second method of looking at these lights. So I'm just going to make a new line here to show you what I mean. Instead of these LED lights um, that I got from Home Depot, I could alternatively go to this cost data sheet here and I could search through this for lighting and find several uh, categories of lighting here. So generally the way this works is that the rows are different options, generally the uh, farthest down in the list. So standard lifetime data sets down here. And then the columns represent different suites or predetermined suites that this BE Ops software is using. So they're, um, they have one option for having 20% fluorescent lights, another one for 40%, another one for 60%, another one for 80%, et cetera, et cetera. In truth, these uh, options sometimes make sense to look at and sometimes don't. You'll notice down here when we look at the cost per lamp for CFL, which is compact fluorescent, for LED, and for LFL, which is linear fluorescent, that all of these costs across all these columns is exactly the same because there it's just the base cost that's going into this number down here. In our case, we're just going to use the base costs. So they're saying that uh, the cost of a LED per lamp is $46. I'm going to go back to my cost spreadsheet tab and I'm going to type in $46 for that um, LED. I've still got 46 of them. And then for the cost per lamp of the linear fluorescent, it says $2.39. So I'm going to go back here and type in $2.39. So it's not exactly the same as the numbers we got from Home Depot, but it's very similar. These costs are from Chicago. And so I wanna do a cost of living adjustment between Chicago and Oakland or Berkeley where the Home Depot is. And in order to do that, I'm gonna to go to this numio.com cost of living comparison, also on the web. Type in, select your city here. So I'm gonna type in um, Berkeley compare with Oakland, uh, Chicago. So this says that the consumer prices in Berkeley are 9.82% higher than in Chicago. And in fact, it's this consumer prices that I'd like you to use for this exercise. So the consumable price is 9.82% higher in Berkeley than in Chicago. So I would type in here 109.82. And then here in the cost of living adjustment, I would reference that cell to get a net adjusted total price of $2,200. I'm gonna delete that line before I forget that I now have two of those same thing. So another method would be to simply make your best guess estimate. So for instance, for the computer lab, 
if we're going to replace all of the standard computers we've got in there now with brand new Energy Star computers, we could take the number of computers, which I think is about 60, and estimate that the new ones would cost somewhere around $2,000 a computer. And then a typical computer of the same quality that's not Energy Star might be 30% less expensive. That will give us a net add of $36,000. And in this case, we wouldn't apply a cost of living adjustment. So that's what it would be. For the passive solar glazing, I can do this rather than by count based by area. So in this case, I think I've got 55 square meters of glazing. And the unit price for glazing, I can get in this cost data sheet. So I'm going to go uh, find windows. And sometimes it takes a little bit of searching through this database to find the right thing. It's finding, in this case, windows in the midst of this description. If you keep pressing find next, it will keep skipping ahead. And sometimes it takes quite a while to get down to a useful bar part of the database. I'm going to keep on searching. So windows and shading. We don't want window areas. We want window type. So in window type here, it lists each row as um, towards the bottom here, these standard unit cost data sets. Um, it gives the NREL database version 2 and the retrofit NREL database version 2. So we'll use the retrofit database. And in this case, these are again referencing parts of the program, front, back, left, and right. That's their model that they're using. Um, and you'll notice that under these costs, it doesn't matter which one you choose, all the costs are the same uh, for each one of those options. Now, there's the window options, which are different here. So you can see that the option single pane is $21 a square foot, whereas what we're going to look for here is a double pane low E with high SHGC, this one here. So this is 24 dollars and 52 cents per square foot. I'm going to go back over here and type in $24 and 52 cents. And in this case, there is no standard replacement. In other words, we're not going to assume that the building, that the, that the glazing is broken. So my standard replacement in this case would be nothing. And so my unit price would be nothing. And my net price would be simply $24.52 times 55. But now as I add this, I realize that's a very low number. And I realize that I this is $24.52 per square foot, but this is per square meter. So to remember to move the decimal place over one, or I can multiply by 10.76. That's actually a little bit more accurate. I want to do that times 10.76 and don't forget equals gives me yeah that seems a little bit more reasonable for the cost of new windows we have to apply our cost of living adjustment we've got a cost of sixteen thousand dollars for those windows for insulation similar process i'm going to go down here and I'm going to find insulation. Let's see if this is the right category of things. This is for ducts, so that's not right. This is for water heaters. I think I'm at the bottom of the, uh, and now, now I'm going back up to the top of the spreadsheet. So this is for walls, and if you look carefully here, the um, spreadsheet breaks down the wall into different components. So there's framing, there's bad insulation, there's exterior OSB sheathing, there's foam insulation, and there's more bad insulation, or sorry, installation there, and, um, and then a total net cost for the whole wall. So in this case, we could take each individually, or we could take a net cost for the whole wall. In the case of Worcester, we've got concrete walls, and so what we'd practically be adding are some metal studs to the inside with um, bad insulation, and then sheetrock. That's a little bit different than what I've got here. So I'm just going to take a net wall square footage, price per square foot, and I'm going to look for the um, amount of insulation that I would add. Now, this only goes up to R21 with 2 by 6s 24 inches on center, plus 1 inch of foam. What I could do, because I've got... Um, 
300 millimeters of insulation or a, a one foot thick wall here that I've modeled, um, I could just double this would be a pretty close approximation. So instead of $4.50 for the wall, I could do $9 per um, square foot. Is that per square foot? of wall yes you have to be careful sometimes it's linear foot like it says for framing there uh, but this is square foot for wall so i'm just going to try that at nine dollars for the wall and i have two primary walls both of them are 48 square meters so instead of $9, this should be $90. So that's $96.84. Um, and again, there's no standard replacement because I'm not replacing anything. I'm gonna estimate the cost at about $5,000, $4,500, plus my cost of living adjustment gives me $5,100 for those walls. Okay, how about infiltration control? Well, this one's another one that's a little bit difficult to estimate. I'm going to see, I'm actually not sure, but let's see. They've got that in this database. This category is in ceilings and roofs. Yes. So here's a whole category on airflow and infiltration. You can see that they do a very scientific method between very leaky, leaky, typical, tight, tighter, and tightest. Does it give it? It doesn't give an air change per hour for each of these options, but you can um, estimate based on what we discussed in class for guidelines for infiltration. So we're going to go uh, for a retrofit from, for Worcester we'll do retrofit from very leaky, has a choice of retrofit from leaky to re for, or retrofit from very leaky. And we're gonna go to tight, that's as far as it goes. So two, $2.90 per square foot above grade finished. So I think that's a square foot of floor area. So I'm gonna go back to here and $2.90 times 10.6. And my floor area is 148 square meters. And again, there's no standard replacement. My cost of living is 110%. And there's my estimate for infiltration. Which is probably a pretty good estimate for Worcester Hall for just room 214. Now, not including ducts is an interesting one because I assumed for my ventilation that I didn't have any duct work in my uh, optimization suite. So that means I would have a through wall ventilation unit. That ventilation unit itself um, is really the cost of what we're doing. So. I'm going to type in here through wall ventilation unit and I'm going to look for an appropriate one for the size of room 214. In the cost data spreadsheet, let's look for a ventilation unit. Here's mechanical ventilation. And you can see that it gives a few different options here um, at $250, $463, $1,800. So $250 might be an appropriate range or so. I'm going to double check that on Home Depot and see what they have in HVC accessories. Let's see, this, this is a 3000 CFM fan for $200, uh, which is probably way more than we need. Um, here's a, another big one for 245. Um, these are all relatively large fans for $200. So I don't think we need to spend more than that for this fan, uh, but probably more than just a standard bathroom fan. So I'm going to just assume that $200 is a good estimate and go with one of those at $200. And again, this is, um, in this case, there's no, we're not replacing anything. This is from Home Depot, so there's no cost of living adjustment. Thank you.